With vMix, you can stream to multiple destinations like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter all at the same time. So if you're wanting to reach a larger audience with your content, stick around and I'll show you how. Hi there, I'm Heath from vMix. If you're new to vMix, be sure to download our free 60-day trial that will give you full access to the top-tier edition of vMix. I've dropped a link to it in the description. Speaking of vMix editions, these range from basic HD right up to pro to suit different needs. But here's the neat thing, every single edition can stream to three platforms at once. Now, as I was saying before, this allows you to reach a larger audience, but it also allows you to customize what each audience sees and hears. For example, you could stream your main show to multiple services, but only offer a pre and post show on one service that's set up as a premium paid offering or you could send out one stream in English and another in Spanish or Japanese. Now, these are just a few of the benefits and I'll cover a few more off throughout the demonstration. So with all that said, let's jump into the vMix interface to set up some streams. Okay, here you can see that I've got a simple production setup. I've got my camera with embedded audio and a title. Here I can click on the stream settings button and I'm presented with all of the settings for my streams. I can pick which stream I'm setting up from these three buttons here. They act like tabs and clicking on one will present the settings for that stream. So let's look at stream one first. Here I can set the streaming destination up by either picking a service from the list or using a custom stream to any service that accepts a URL and stream key. Now, most streaming services allow you to use a URL and stream key, but selecting this method means that you'll have to create your stream details like your title and your description on that service's website instead of in vMix. You'll find a link in the description that goes into this further, but for this demonstration, we'll look at some of the listed streaming destinations because they allow you to log into your streaming service directly from vMix using each provider's API. This makes things a lot simpler and saves you time in the long run. So we'll start with Facebook. In the past, it wasn't possible to stream through Facebook's API and stream to another service at the same time, but these days, this isn't an issue. By selecting Facebook, you'll notice that the URL and stream key disappear and are replaced with a button. We'll click on it, and then here at the top, you can see a Login to Facebook button. By clicking on this, vMix will open a web browser and attempt to log in using the active Facebook account on your browser. With that done, we'll return to vMix to create a stream. For this demonstration, we'll set up a very basic stream by setting the location to my timeline with a new stream titled Stream 1 and with the description Streaming to Destination 1. I'll make it private by selecting only me, which is a good option for testing, but if I wanted to go live to an audience, I would pick public or friends instead. And I won't worry about scheduling it. Last but not least, I'll click on the Create Stream button. This sets the stream up so that it's ready to go, but don't worry, it won't start the stream yet. Now, to set up the quality of this stream, we can pick from one of these default options. I'll go with the 1080p at 4.5 megabits per second, which is a medium quality 1080p stream. From here, we can go into the settings and customize things further. As a special note, keep in mind that we'll be setting up multiple streaming destinations and it's important to understand that our upload bandwidth is going to be used to do this. So the bitrate of every stream needs to be added together to know how much upload bandwidth we'll be consuming. As an example, if your internet connection offers a constant 30 megabits per second of upload, then it's a good rule of thumb to keep your total upload under 50% of that. So that's a total of 15 megabits per second or 15,000 kilobits per second, which is how the number's shown here. Of course, it's up to you how close to the upload limit you choose to go. Some of our customers do 80% plus successfully, but be sure to run plenty of tests beforehand, regardless of what you choose. All of our other settings should be fine to keep as is, but here are two settings that we'll quickly touch on, the video source and the audio channels. For the video source, if you're using vMix 4K or above, you have the ability to send an alternative video source out using your second output. This can be helpful if you're sending out a feed that looks a bit different to your primary feed. It could have an overlay of somebody using sign language or an alternative camera angle, or maybe a feed with different logos or branding. 
Most of the time, however, you'll probably leave this set as output one. Now, if streaming two different video outputs at the same time is something you're looking to do, definitely check out our training videos about it linked in the description. And for the audio channels, here you can select whether you want to stream the master audio or a different set of audio channels. The ability to use different audio channels is particularly handy for sending out multilingual streams. And just like for that second video output, we have a training video that explains how to do two different audio streams at the same time. So you'll find that linked in the description too. Okay, we'll return to the main settings and I'm choosing to tick use hardware encoder. In vMix, you'll come across this option in various places and it's related to how your PC converts your live video to a format suitable for streaming or recording. There are basically two ways to encode live video on your PC. You can use your CPU, which can do pretty much anything, but only in a step-by-step -step sequence, which can sometimes be inefficient. Or you can use dedicated hardware, in this case your graphics card, which can only do very specific things like video processing, but it can do them much faster and more efficiently. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card and it's a GeForce GTX 1050 or better, or if you have any of the GeForce RTX models, your graphics card can do up to three simultaneous encodes. So that means you can tick this box up to three times throughout vMix. If you have an NVIDIA RTX professional card, then you can do more than three and it'll only be limited by the performance of the card. Now, I have a GeForce RTX card and I already have this feature ticked for the recording of this demonstration. So ticking here puts me at two hardware encodes. It's pretty important that you understand this to get the most out of your PC when using vMix. Always try to maximize the use of hardware encoding to reduce the load on your CPU. Righto, we now have our first stream set up. Time to go to our second one. We'll click on Stream 2 and this time let's set the destination to YouTube Live Stream Now. In order to live stream to YouTube, you may want to check that you've got permission to do so. To do this, head on over to studio.youtube.com, log in with your YouTube account if required, and then click on the Create button and select Go Live. Now this will either take you to your studio page or will inform you that live streaming isn't available at the moment and give you a button to enable it. So the good news is that this will enable live streaming for you, but the bad news is that it will typically take 24 hours. Once you have access to YouTube Studio live streaming, you're good to connect it to vMix. So back at vMix, we've got YouTube live stream now selected. Now, just like for Facebook, we click on the settings button for this destination and then click on the login button. This will open a browser and ask for the account to use to log into YouTube. Then it will inform us that vMix wants access to stream to our YouTube account. To give vMix this access, we'll need to tick the box beside manage your YouTube account and then click continue. This is very important because it is not ticked by default. With this done, you'll see that we're now logged into YouTube via vMix and have the ability to create our second stream. Or we could stream to a pre-made event if we made one on YouTube prior. For this demonstration, we'll create the stream from scratch, leaving create stream automatically ticked. We'll pop the title in, let's call this one stream two and we'll set the privacy to private for this demonstration. But again, if you wanna share this with other viewers, you'll wanna pick public or unlisted. Now we hit okay and can set up the quality of this stream or we can just tick use stream one quality. Now this will send the same stream out to YouTube that we're sending to Facebook. Note that in ticking this, we've now doubled the upload bandwidth from 4.5 megabits per second to a total of nine megabits per second, and also automatically ticked the use hardware encoder box. So this is gonna use up that third and final simultaneous encode on my GPU. Because remember, we're using one for recording, one for the first stream, and now this one. Now I should add that our graphics card has a hardware encode limit of three, but these things change from time to time. So what I'm gonna do is link in the description a table from NVIDIA that lists how many hardware encodes each graphics card has so that you can look it up for yourself. All right, now for this third stream. Now I could pick any of the other destinations or I could pick one of the destinations that I've already picked. As I mentioned before, sometimes you might wanna send a secondary stream out to the same streaming provider that has say an ASL sign language overlay or a different language audio feed or maybe a behind the scenes camera angle. 
To do this, I'll demonstrate by selecting Facebook again. And because I've set up the account connection already, we simply create a second stream with a new title. Let's call it Spanish stream, for example. Now I'm going to set the stream up and hit create stream. Then we untick use stream one quality, set our desired quality, and then enter the settings to select output two as our video source or a different audio channel or both. Now, because all three hardware encodes are used, I need to leave this one unticked. And that means my CPU will be handling the encoding of this stream. With that done, we're ready to stream. We can click on the save and close button and then simply press the stream button when we're ready if we want to start all of our streams at once. Or we can click on the triangle button beside the stream button to start certain streams at certain times to accommodate pre and post show content, for example. We'll start them all together for this demonstration. It can take a few seconds to establish the stream, so just be patient. And once the stream button is red, we know we're streaming. We can monitor each stream up the top. And if any stream goes from red to yellow, then this tells us that something needs our attention and our stream is being hindered. If this happens to you, then in the description, there's a link to a support article that should help you troubleshoot why your stream button is yellow. Often it will be a limitation on your upload bandwidth or PC performance issues. Because multi-streaming can be resource intensive, it's good practice to start streaming a little early and check your streams are appearing on each service and look and sound correct. So let's duck over to Facebook and YouTube and check on these things now. All right, there we are. We can see that Facebook is streaming and there, so is YouTube. And that's it. That's how you can stream to multiple destinations at the same time. So I'll stop the streams now by clicking on the stream button again, and I'll quickly touch on something that's less common these days, but it's still good to know. Large streaming services like YouTube will take your stream and transcode it into a range of different resolutions to suit different viewers. So all you need to do is send one stream at your top quality, and they'll automatically transcode a range of lower quality versions. However, there are some services that require you to send multiple bitrate streams to them, and this is where Stream 1 multi bitrate and the custom multi bitrate come in. You'll only find these options on your second and third stream settings because they are additional to the primary stream. If your streaming provider requires each stream to use the same URL and stream key, then you'll select Stream 1 and multi bitrate, then set the quality to something lower than your primary stream. If your streaming provider requires a different URL and or stream key for the second stream bitrate, then select custom bitrate and enter the details and set the quality. Now, before I go, I want to discuss one other option for streaming to multiple destinations at once. From vMix, you can also stream to multi-streaming services such as Restream. These services accept a single stream from you and then send that stream out to multiple services on your behalf. This is handy for a number of reasons, but the four main ones I'll note are, one, your PC only needs to encode one stream, which is great if you don't have a powerful PC and need to save on resources. Two, you're only uploading one stream, so if your internet connection has limited bandwidth, this allows you to send out one high quality feed and the multi-streaming service will do the rest. Three, you can stream to more than three destinations if you wanna reach an even larger audience. Some services can go to over 30 destinations at once. And four, some of these services allow you to send multiple streams to them as different channels. So if you were to send your secondary stream to them, you could be sending out multiple languages or video feeds to all of those different destinations at once. If this sounds useful, have a search online for restreaming or multi-streaming services. There are a bunch out there that offer free and paid services depending on your needs. And that's where we'll end. I hope you found this demonstration helpful and it's got you thinking about new opportunities to reach your audiences. If you've got any questions about streaming or anything to do with vMix, rather than leaving your questions in the comments, why not head on over to our website at vmix.com. There you'll find plenty of material to help, as well as a link to our email support page, which is the best way to get in touch with us. And finally, if you've found other benefits to multi-streaming that I haven't covered here, feel free to share them in the comments to help out the wider streaming community. Well, thanks for watching, 
and I'll see you again next time. One, two, three, four. I hope you found this demonstration helpful. Be sure to run plenty of tests before in multi-streaming. The good news is the vMix can do pretty much anything, but here's the neat thing. With vMix, you can stream to multiple destinations all at the same time. 